We begin this hour with new music from singer-songwriter Margot Price. One of these days, you're gonna wake up older With a hole in your pocket and a blade on your shoulder that's Change of Heart from Price's new album. It's called Strays, which is out right now. Price says the record was forged in the fire of many substances in the midst of heavy personal reckoning. She met up with Anthony, as in Mason, to talk about their journey at the Chelsea Hotel in New York and also in Nashville, where she has made her home. It looks the, really cool. It's, you know, first truck I ever bought with my own money. For most of her music career, Margo Price has had her boot on the gas pedal, going her own way. You kind of created this sort of outlaw country image for yourself. Yeah, it was a it was a role. You know, I became it. Basically, from your childhood, you say you were rebellious. Mm -hmm. Where did that come from? God, I wish I knew. <laughs> <laughs> I've always been rebelling against the way that the world is. But when COVID hit and shut down her career, life got dark. You can't outrun your demons when you're just sitting at home every night uh, drinking 10 White Claws. <laughs> you know, not, not 10 every time, but <laughs> kind of lose track. <laughs> Price was struggling to make sense of her life, writing a memoir she'd call Maybe We'll Make It, when her editor made an observation. She said, you know, whiskey is, is basically like another character in your book. Yeah. And I was like, Whew. In January of 2021, as she was also writing her new album, Strays, she quit drinking. What did you see in that moment? I saw that there was more to me than this, like, kind of bad girl image that I had created. I put hurting on the back. Price made her name in Nashville with songs like Hurtin' on the Bottom. Been drinking whiskey like it's water. If her music sounded real, it's cause she'd lived the lyrics. Been through hell in the Born in Illinois, Price moved to Nashville in 2003 and started playing anywhere that would take her. It says 1896. Like the Springwater Supper Club and Lounge. There you go. Yay. The tassel stuff in yes. the back. Is this like... has been here for as long as I can remember. This is one of the only places I could get a gig at. <laughs> With her future husband, Jeremy Ivey, she put a band together called Buffalo Clover. They became regulars at the five spot. You were trying to build a following, I assume, here? Yeah, yeah, it was, it was a real scene. I mean, it was home. It was a second home for a while. In 2010, Margot and Jeremy welcomed twin boys, Judah and Ezra. But Ezra had a heart defect. He died two weeks after he was born. It was all I could do was just numb those feelings. Well, I mean. And I, sometimes I, th I thank booze because it saved my life. It absolutely did. I, if I would have had to yeah. live in that grief, it just would have been too much. I don't think you can be any more alone than a moment like that. Even my husband didn't understand yeah. the grief that I felt. And I felt a lot of shame from it because I felt like there must have been something wrong with me. Yes. Even though I knew it was, you know, it was just a genetic thing that just happens. Yeah. Margot's marriage nearly fell apart. Her band did break up, and things looked bleak until she was suddenly signed by Jack White's label, Third Man Records. Isn't that amazing how one little thing can just turn everything upside down? One thing. It was, I mean, after that, it was just like 
but people saw me in a whole new light. In 2016, Midwest Farmer's Daughter put Margot Price on the map. The album hit number one on the UK country chart and number 10 here. Price was even booked on Saturday Night Live. But the day before the show, she read some nasty comments on social media. It was people telling me that I needed to get a nose job or whatever, and it's like, it was my Achilles heel back then. I went out and got annihilated. I stayed up till four in the morning and drank every tiny bottle of liquor in the hotel room and did some other things too that my editor maybe might have wiped away. <laughs> <laughs> you made me feel like an orphan and act like a clown. Somehow, she still went on the air. nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> now I eat haters for breakfast. I do truly feel like quitting drinking has been the most rebellious thing I've ever done. I've never felt better in my life. She shares it all with excruciating honesty in Maybe We'll Make It. I had a panic attack when I turned in the final draft of the book. Because? Because I was, I was worried about the judgment. I was worried about the people hated me saying, oh, you're a bad mom and you know, you're this and, and you're that. Price told her husband she wanted to scrap the book. But he just turned to me and he said, he said, you belong to no one. Yeah. And sort of know, interesting to hear a husband say that. I thought it was incredible. What did that mean to you? It gave me all the confidence to go forward and just be able to be vulnerable. I actually got it tattooed on my arm. It says, you belong to no one <laughs> right here, so I don't forget it. What's her husband's name? Go husband, Anthony. Yeah, no you kidding, belong right? to I no mean, one. A couple days before we took that truck ride, uh, Margot celebrated two years since she's quit drinking. I said, how'd you celebrate? She said, I took a five-mile walk and I got a massage. And I said, perfect. Yeah, you know? But isn't interesting, it's so sorry that, I'm so sorry that people can get to you online who don't yeah. know anything about you. They're talking about your nose, your appearance, your mothering, and that that would get to her. But I love showing that she, because I thought you were going to say she didn't make it to no. Saturday Night Live, but she no, she did. gave an unbelievable performance. Does she Shel have a hangover <laughs> cure we can maybe post online? <laughs> and look gorgeous. My favorite line is, though, eats haters for breakfast. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, you get tough to learn how to do that, but she's done it. She had a really tough pandemic. You know, her, da she, her daughter, Ramona, was born in 2019, and then her husband got a really bad case of COVID. Yeah. So she said, I really felt alone raising this child. Things got very dark. But mm -hmm. as you can see, she credits it actually to a, she said a mushroom trip actually is what opened her mind and I said, you know what? You can do that. this. Yes. You can you can beat booze and you can turn wow. corner. Yeah, wow. not the conventional path out, but no, people but talk it works about that. For but it works. Yeah. People that do it have said that it really does work. Yeah. yeah. You belong to no one. Yeah. That was like deep. That. Yeah. That was Eat deep. haters well done, for Anthony. breakfast. <laughs> that was good too. Thank I you like very that much.